Hey guys, in this video I'm going to review batteries from a stack rack. It's a second version of those batteries. It's server rack style. I did install them before, mostly in the outdoor rated cabinets. What is nice about server rack batteries is that you can install anywhere from 5 kilowatt hours up to infinity. In this video I'm going to review second version and the on top is going to be a combiner cabinet where we can land all our batteries and run wires, heavy gauge wires to inverter. If you're interested, let's jump into the video. Because of the battery weight, it has to be freight shipping. And uh, here we have pallet with uh, two batteries, combiner cabinet and uh, mounting brackets. Inside the cabinet we have bus bars, 1000 amps rated, we have one old wires to connect from bus bars to inverter and we're getting two sets of wires to connect batteries to bus bars. And here's the battery itself, we have screen to see parameters for the battery, standard circuit breaker to power on off battery, button to activate deactivate BMS and then we have four ports to communicate with other batteries and with inverter. When we activate BMS, we're gonna see welcome screen and uh, right here on this screen, we're gonna see a state of charge for the battery and uh, we don't have any control here. We can just see voltage per cell, temperature of BMS and we have four temperature sensors installed on cells. Assembling batteries is a pretty straightforward process using SR brackets. We can install up to eight batteries in one row plus combiner cabinet. So from one vertical stack, we can get more than 40 kilowatt hours of energy. On the back side of a combiner cabinet, we have uh, plenty of knockouts to run all wires to combine them on the bus bars. And uh, here's all battery wires connected together. Now we can connect inverter and run tests. For battery communication, we're using battery comb port. We're connecting two batteries together. On the master battery, deep switches should be all on except first one. And uh, on the followers, on the second battery in our case is going to be second deep switch off and then we're going to have a battery ID first and battery ID second and then CAN bus is connected to solar communication port and then in the battery setup right here we have battery lithium uh, BMS profile zero zero and if we go here we can see all information about the battery to set up profiles for inverters on the battery, we have to move all the switches to on position, then turn the battery just on button, and um, whenever it's gonna load, we have to press this button for five seconds, and we're gonna access this menu, then in the kind of protocol, we can select Solar, or here's a list of supported inverters. After setting protocol, we have to move deep switches back. This is master battery and uh, restart the battery. I'm charging these batteries and the top one in the standby mode, it's fully charged. And here's the cell voltage. We have 351, 351, 349. So it's about balanced cells. On the dead one, we have uh, it's charging and the uh, cell voltage on one cell 371 and uh, as far as I know it shouldn't go more than 365 then we have 343 on this cell 346 366 so cells on this battery is much more imbalanced than on the first one battery is fully charged I did connect this meter to batteries and uh, we are going to discharge them overnight and we'll see what is the capacity battery fully discharged to 43 volts and uh, we've got 
195 amps and 10.10 uh, .10 kilowatt hours of energy. On the top cover we have uh, insulating material to protect cells from touching the metal. It's interesting we have something looks like temperature sensor right here and uh, it's going into this enclosure but I don't see this enclosure connected to BMS. So let's disassemble and see what's inside there. And here's the removed front control panel. And this device is not connected to BMS or doesn't have any wires, just one temperature sensor. And uh, I did check with engineers from uh, StackRack and this is actually fire arrestor. On the right side of the battery case we have another fire arrestor and we have pre-charge resistor. Also what is interesting, all of those bus bars, they are welded to the cell, but additionally they do have screws, you know, maybe like extra protection. But it, I, I want to remove one of the cells and I cannot because it's welded. But here's a just in case QR codes for the cells. Before assembling battery back, to make sure all screws are gonna stay in place, I'm adding drop of thread lock. I did check with engineers from a stack rack about 195 amp hours capacity and uh, about this balance in uh, one of the battery. So they did recommend to charge this to 56 volts so it can self-balance and retest uh, capacity again. I did that, I did uh, run battery for about 6-7 hours with 56 volts. It did somewhat balance the cells. I did see this was 3.5 and uh, that one was 3.37. So still not well balanced, but uh, the battery fully charged right now. So 99, 99%. And uh, I'm running another test. So we did pull about half amp from my batteries. Let's come back in the morning and see results. And the battery just shut down. Voltage 44 volts. We've got 197 amp hours. 10.18 kilowatt hours. To summarize the results for these batteries, on the cons side, of course, uh, nominal capacity. We got 195 amp hours first time, and uh, I don't remember how much was second time. But my expectation that from a factory we're gonna get matched and balanced cells, so we, we can get nominal capacity out of the box. So that's only one item I can think of negative item. One questionable item. While those brackets are really easy to assemble, I'm not sure if you're gonna do installation with inspections, how inspectors will consider wires, which is exposed on the back side, if it's gonna pass inspection. If you're just doing without inspection, installing those batteries at home, it's, it's a really nice and easy setup for internal installation, of course. On the positive side, it's a really great quality. We have really thick metal. Bus bars, it's a quarter inch copper. I first time see such a big bus bars and they're rated for 1000 amps. Uh, also huge benefit for these batteries. I'm in California and uh, if you want to uh, uh, file interconnection agreement with electric company, batteries have to be California Energy Commission certified or listed. And those batteries are listed so we can install them in California. And uh, one uh, feature that I first time see in the batteries is fire arresters. We have two fire arresters on the two sides of the battery. So we have some extra protection and I didn't see this before in any other batteries. All right, guys, that's all about these tests. Uh, as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.